Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, it's Andy from Big Mix Workshop Painting Studio and we're back doing painting tut tutorials and this time it's 40k at last. Uh, I know you've been wanting me to do some 40k stuff for, uh, for a little while and uh, whilst I've been focusing on Lord of the Rings but, uh, you know, uh, we've got to get things done when we can. So I know um, you'd probably be expecting power armour I did not fancy painting any power armour um, at the minute so uh, we went back to going green and uh, so what we've got is an orc warbiker knob um, who's going to be done up in Bad Moon colours um, Bad, uh, Bad Moon being obviously yellow uh, making it quite complicated to paint um, so uh, I'm really having a, uh, I'm really going to have a go at getting the yellow right on camera for you guys because uh, I know uh, it can be a bit of a swine so I start off with Rift Green for the skin and I'm starting to highlight up with a mixture of Rift Green and War Green now uh, as you can see just going onto the muscle texture um, was extending it into the recesses but not going too far I've um, seen some uh, styles where the skin work looks quite kind of stripy and it looks really interesting so I'm working on that sort of uh, method um, with my own little twist to it so now I've added a little bit more Rift um, War Green and as you can see the highlights are starting to pop up now uh, we're really going to uh, be emphasizing those high points but like I said we're going to have that kind of like streaky sort of style highlight so I wanted something to just play around with uh, do things a little bit different as I've uh, never tr attempted it so this is my first crack at it uh, let me see uh, tell me what you think at the end of the uh, tutorial so as, you, as you can see I'm um, using the uh, the paintbrush to focus in uh, the same places uh, in straight lines straight up and down the uh, armor so really adding texture to the uh, to to the skin work now this is a uh, german field gray which is a uh, field green german field gray gray which is actually a green color uh, added into the uh, mixture and as you can see it's starting to um, make a much more earthy sort of color uh, really adding um, a lot of um, depth to the model but still keeping it quite dark because he's a knob he should be dark skinned as uh, as uh, is tradition with the uh, knob orcs get darker as they get bigger um, and also I wanted to stay away from the pinks which I've been using for green skins as well as uh, I'm trying to keep things a little bit different trying to do things in different ways for you guys because it makes it more interesting so now I'm using scale 75 Sherwood green in there uh, as you can see I'm using a narrow brush and as you can see it's also quite I'm going for that sort of aligned um, high, highlight effect uh, starting to focus really um, really emphasize on the uh, most extreme points now. now we're going to bring this all together because it looks kind of cartoony uh, so what we're going to do um, once we've uh, got the colors how we want it we're going to wash it all down well, as you can see the, uh, the Sherwood yellow is really Sherwood, Sherwood uh, green is really kind of yellowy so it really adds a lot of um, uh, color to the green now we're going to go uh, with the inside of the mouth and the eyes with deep red. Uh, any any kind of dark red you can do, uh, you can use is fine. Now uh, there's not really much detail uh, to work with on this side, so uh, you don't really need to go over top over the top with uh, painting um, the inside of the mouth as it's all teeth. Um, it just gets a nice base colour in there, uh, so make it look like uh, how it should. So now I've added a little bit of high key yellow into the mixture of the uh, with the Sherwood green. Uh, high key yellow is quite a, a bright colour and it really makes a nice highlight on, uh, on any kind of uh, yellowy colour. So um, main, mainly, mostly on the uh, knuckles, uh, edges of the fingernails, real stretched areas, uh, also around the face like the top of the lips, uh, around the eye sockets, that sort of thing. And then we're going to bring it all together with uh, a green wash. This is green from uh, the Army Painter range. Uh, BL Time Green or um, Aphonian camo shade probably work just as well. I uh, just wanted an actual green rather than a kind of a weird bluey green colour, and it's just going to uh, bring all the colours together and make it a lot more um, uniform. Now, as you can see, I've uh, gone over the top of the black on the bike on the bike itself with a, a zenithal essentially highlight of uh, grey. Now, I only did that not uh, to give you something to look at behind the, on, on the black background. Uh, there was no real uh, reasoning other than that to uh, make it easier to look, make, make it easier to see. And I've got a start colour of Plague Brown, uh, which is 
strangely enough, a, um, a sort of a browny yellow colour. And uh, it's just getting a nice thin coat across the entirety of all the yellow bits. Um, and after a couple of coats, that's the colour we get. Uh, onto the uh, jersey, and that's going to be walnut. Uh, I wanted a kind of a, uh, a dirty, um, sort of hessian sort of what he, he's made the coat, coat, coat out of whatever he's got to, to hand sort of uh, look so sort of kind of a, a hessian sack sort of colour and obviously onto the silvers um, is gunmetal um, lead belcher iron breaker anything like that I, I tend to use gunmetal because it's a nice mid colour um, really uh, works really nicely for this sort of thing um, also, as um, I've uh, often done before, I do tend to mix my colours up a little bit so uh, you don't get solid blocks of the same colour, just subtle shades slightly differently. Uh, it makes the model look a lot more interesting. So once we've got some uh, gun metal down, I'm using Brass Scorpion for the guns, um, which now uh, which, which sounds a lot better in my, in my head than it does actually on uh, out, out loud. But the uh, guns and some of the... Uh, bolted on areas, uh, getting painted up in brass scorpion, again it just breaks up these colours, we don't want massive chunks of the same colour but we don't want anything uh, too far away so it's really wacky. And onto the leather work, we're getting some uh, Rhinox hide on there, uh, as you know um, Rhinox hide is a really good colour for any kind of leather work and it, uh, it really fits well for the Orcs. I'm also doing the same colour on the saddle of the bike um, any of that sort of area, maybe the belt as well if uh, you wanted to paint his belt the same colour uh, these, uh, all these sort of things would work really well with Rhinoxide so some more metal work uh, once we've got the uh, um, Rhinoxide down for the um, handle and what have you he's uh, going for what what Bronze uh, by GW and this again is a uh, another colour on the same sort of line as the brass scorpion but as you can see it's a lot darker a lot less red in there it's more of a brown colour and the reason I've done this as I've said before it uh, keeps it all um, unified makes it look like it's part of the same kit but again just breaks up them colours uh, so you're not getting big areas um, all looking the same and I tried to go for something approaching denim on his trousers um, this is my idea of how I would do it and I started off with Dark Reaper um, not quite sure uh, I've definitely got the right colour but it needs a little bit of work on the me on the recipe so I get it right uh, and a little bit of navy blue on the um, like weird little logos uh, on his armour plate and his uh, bikes as well on his bike as well uh, just breaks up the colour and everyone knows if you're an orc blue is lucky so it uh, kind of fits that he's got a little bit of blue on there just to uh, give him a little bit of luck so he can pass some of them saves he gets occasionally okay and uh, this is where the first wash goes down uh, non oil uh, pretty much uh, on anything what's uh, either leather or metal and uh, just getting it nice and even all over it um, all over the bike all over the bloke you know anyf anything what looks like it would need uh, kind of a black line on there And Reekland Flesh Shade is getting uh, gently um, uh, slapped onto the uh, yellow sections. They're also around the blues because, you know, they're in the middle of the yellows. Um, and you're just getting nice even coverage all over that just to add a little bit of uh, depth to the uh, yellow itself. Okay, I'm now going to start using some GW paints on the... Um, yellows and this is Ur Uriel Yellow by Games Workshop uh, yeah I really dislike this uh, yellow it's not that great at all and I'm bringing but I'm gonna try and use these colors as you can see I'm using thin colors and it's still taking a lot of time to uh, a lot it, it takes a lot of layers to um, bring this color up to a, an actual yellow so after uh, a bit of a fight getting the yellow right and now add flash gets yellow uh, for some highlights. And as you can see, 
Uh, it's starting to get somewhere now, looking a bit more um, bad moony. Uh, adding some nice, bright, vibrant yellows on there. Uh, so it's really going to start to stand out. So I'm going to start doing some highlights on the edges. And this is Lilith Yellow by Scale 75. Real vibrant colour. As you can see, you get nice edge highlights on, um, on those armour plates all over the bike and what have you with this Lilith Yellow. And you can take it up a bit higher with... Um, Hikey yellow, if you if you really wished, uh, really make those edge highlights really uh, really pop out. But uh, this is as far as I felt I, uh, I needed to take it. So cut section. Nine seven two. Back onto the metalwork. Um, obviously, we've had a nice uh, black wash going over there. I'm just trying to tidy everything up with the brass scorpion again. Now, because it's going over the uh, brass scorpion with a normal oil, it's going to be uh, you're going to get a really nice finish on there. But we, uh, we're mainly using it to tidy things up rather than as a highlight. We're just cleaning up some of the areas where we don't want it to uh, be too dark. Um, so. We're really using it just to polish up the um, base finish, uh, the base uh, coat. So now we're using Vallejo's Gold, real thin colour, um, but it does actually highlight up the uh, the brass scorpion quite nicely. I decided to use this gold because it's um, not very yellowy; it's uh, more of a a browny gold, I suppose you could say, but it's quite thin. So uh, it's on. on in the same lines of uh, Psychorax bronze is really thin and you go it goes over the top but it's more of a filter than a high than a, an actual color so I've added a, a touch of gun metal and just going around the barrel um, the you know the openings in the barrel uh, where um, around the edges just to get a, a nice highlighted color on there uh, so it's uh, just gonna start to really pop a and I'm using steel um, which uh, is uh, quite a bright colour. To be fair, I should have gone for um, using the oily steel first instead of a steel, and then using steel as a secondary highlight. Um, these, this is a, a reference is made in highlight in hindsight, and everyone knows it's in uh, 2020. But the steel's a, a nice uh, highlight colour for any kind of metal work, um, and it really does uh, have a good finish on there. As you can see, I'm just doing some uh, edge highlights all around the, um, the extremities of the guns and that. Now, I did find it a lot easier to paint this um, whilst completely separated. Um, I would not fancy painting uh, this model um, when fully built. There's a lot of uh, nooks and crannies what you just won't be able to get into. Uh, so, if you do get one, of, if you do get into painting one of these. Do leave it in sub assembly, it makes life a lot easier. So, rune or brass now onto the uh, brass scorpion, and it's just going to start uh, bringing up that um, nice, rich colour um, just slightly, and uh, just taking it away from that sort of dark, um, rusted colour. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit um, with rune lord and a bit of psychorax. This is just going to lift the colour a little bit, really add some highlights, and uh, just make it look a bit more interesting, a bit more. Um, cobbled together. So Psychorix um, bronze, as as you know, it is kind of a transparent colour. Um, really nice, it nicely highlights these these shades, um, but it also doesn't take too much away from the base colour underneath. Uh, onto the blue sections, and this is Arianod Blue by Scale Seventy Five, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, and as you can see, it just uh, adds a nice um, warm colour. Uh, a nice warm highlight onto the uh, any other blue little um, gubbins and bits and pieces, uh, just to uh, really make make them look a little bit more interesting. And finally, just a touch of uh, Mediterranean blue, uh, just on one edge of the uh, of the little logos and that. Nothing, nothing fancy. We don't need to go over the top on this guy, uh, but um, we are trying to keep these highlights quite neat 
and we want it to look good in the end. So back to his um, his, jer his jacket, or his coat, his shirt or whatever. Uh, this is Walnut again, uh, bringing it up to uh, the original base colour with some nice dark patches le uh, left behind uh, where all the um, recesses are and just tidying everything up a little bit. Um, I sometimes use this method as a, a, an initial highlight as well as uh, um, a, 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 as well as you know clean, a clean up stage. Now I've added some sandalwood. Um, I've added a little bit too much of it, but it's not so bad. Uh, the sandalwood's kind of a pinky brown. Uh, it does ni it does highlight uh, walnut quite nicely, and I've just got to uh, just make sure everything's nice and tidy before we go up to the next stage, which is even more sandalwood, pretty much pure. And uh, this is a, a really good colour, and you get a, an interesting sort of brown. It's not your classic um, Rhinox Hide sort of look. You get a much more um, softer colour, much more uh, towards a sort of a dirty beige. So now we're using a Bosch Chestnut, uh, which is going to highlight the level work. And this is uh, again a scale seventy five paint. Um, it's a night. It, it's the first time I've actually used it to highlight um, Rhinox Hide, and I found it worked really well. Um, it's it's a very different colour. It's much more red uh, than the Rhinox Hide, but it highlights it quite nicely. Onto the denim. This is Thunderhawk Blue um, as the initial highlight for the Dark Reaper, and uh, it did actually work quite well. Um, it, it's a nice transition between the uh, there's a nice transition between Thunderhawk and Dark Reaper. They really uh, do go together quite uh, quite nicely. And I've added some Fenrisian Grey into the Thunderhawk as a nice top highlight, and using this to uh, just bring out any uh, flaws, any uh, marks, uh, just adding add a few nice highlights onto the. Um, onto the seat of the pants around his uh, legs and that just to uh, make it a bit more uh, denim like uh, like I say it's definitely something I'm going to uh, look into trying out a bit more I've never painted denim uh, and this was the uh, my, fir my first crack at it So, time to get his teeth done, and I'm using Iroko for the base, which is kind of a yellowy brown. Uh, as you can see, I've not really done a hell of a lot with the inside of his mouth, because you can barely see it behind that whopping great big axe of his. But you can see his teeth, so uh, Iroko, nice yellowy brown, really good base for that. I've also done the same on his fin uh, fingernails, and now I'm using Mojave White, which is a nice yellowy ivory colour, uh, just as a, a highlight, leaving some of the um, yellowy... Uh, the sandy colour uh, left behind just to make it um, look right so we've got that natural sort of um, natural sort of transition so it'll look more na uh, organic and there we have it uh, off the camera I've added a bit of um, battle damage uh, to the vehicle nothing too uh, extravagant I've also I've, as always I've done the oil wash uh, just to bring it together and I've added a little bit of freehand here and there, uh, on the front, throwing some flames on there because it's bad moony. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun painting this one. Um, it's nice to paint some green skins. Good to be back painting 40k. Uh, I know that's what you guys generally watch us for. Uh, so thank you for watching and obviously I've got some thank yous to make. So ma massive thank yous to the Orc Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, d -Wack, Mark, Dave, Tom, Spiky Dude, Warren, Ben. Why Metal Games, you're our top paying patrons, and without this, without your support, we really couldn't do any of this. So a huge thank you to you guys. Also, massive thank you to the Element Games and the Outposts. They're our affiliates. Uh, please check the uh, affi affiliate links in the description. They're, um, our lo they're local um, gaming stores. Get your standard 15 to 20% discount off all your gaming products for anything you want to buy. As a, a bonus to us, if you use our affiliate link, 
and uh, we get 5% store credit. So please, please check, uh, check those guys out. They're really, really good. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this. Uh, and that's enough waffling for me. Hopefully, we'll be getting back to uh, some more 40k in the, in, in the near future, and we shall catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.